Praise the Lord. Can we stand up all over this house and just begin to lift up our hands, invite the presence of the Lord in this house, ask him to have his... Pastor asked me to kick off this service, and just a scripture came to my mind, 2 Timothy 4 and 6. Paul said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Paul was talking about the drink offering. He was ready to be poured out. And I began to think on the final night of this Camp Judah, you've been activated. We've learned how to get up from the altar. We've learned what our calling is, how to move on. And I wonder tonight, is there any young people that says, God, I'm ready to be poured out for you. God, whatever I, when I go back to my city on this final night, God, I'm ready to be offered. I'm ready to be poured out. Whatever you want, God, I'm ready to be offered. I wonder tonight, as we go into service, if we could say, God, whatever you want, God, I want you to do it in my life tonight. God, whatever you got playing, I want to be in the middle of it. Let's, as we get ready to worship one more time, can we just lift our hands all over this house one more time and ask God to have his way tonight. We've already clapped our hands, but let's enter into praise. Let's enter into Judah as we begin to sing. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise his name. I will praise his name. I will bless the Lord. For the rest of my life, I'll forever proclaim, yes, he is good. To my life, for the rest of my life, oh, for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life, I forever proclaim, He's good, yes, He is, He is God. Oh, magnify the Lord. Yes, up on the heavens, I will bless, I will bless the Lord, I will praise his name, I will bless the Lord, I will praise his name, for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life, yes, for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life, I forever proclaim, He is good, yes He is, He is good, and you are good all the time, and all the time, Lord, yeah, you are good 
all the time, Lord, you are so. You are all the time and all the time. You are so good. You are yeah. all the time and all the time. You are good. You are good. All the time. You are good all the time. You are good. Yeah, yeah. You are good all the time. And your love endures forever. You are good all the time. You are good. There is no other name. There is no other name. Like Jesus. Like Jesus. Jesus. There is no other name. There is no other name. Like Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus! Hallelujah. We have young people at Camp Judah that have made a commitment that said, I will bless the Lord and I will bless the Lord forever. Forever I will praise his name. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to where God picked me up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands. Let's worship him from the front to the back. From the east to the west, we give you praise, God. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to have the group come sing at this time. Worship with them as they sing. There's nothing more precious 
than seeing young people that are full of the Holy Ghost on fire for God, singing the praises of God. Hallelujah. Worship with them as they sing. Sleeper, open your eyes. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give him praise. He's worthy, he's worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. At this time, we're going to bring, going to bring to this pulpit a young minister out of Brother Patrick Harvey's, Pastor Patrick Harvey's church. Great young man. He's got a great spirit. Great spirit about Brother Matthew Faircloth. I don't know him as well as I'd like to. He's a great young man. But every time I see him, no matter whether he's in church, no matter where he's at, he's a man of character. He's a man of character. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's welcome him to this pulpit for a few moments in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Man, what an atmosphere of expectation and the spirit of God we feel. I believe anything could happen tonight if we can just connect with the Lord, give it our all. There's no telling what, what calling you'll receive here, what ministry will be birthed here. Anything could happen. I'm going to be quick tonight and get out of the way and let the Lord do his work. So if I can have your attention just for a few moments. A few weeks ago when I was praying about this, this service, this camp, I felt the Lord speak to me that this week there'd be young people who would leave here and begin to walk in a new authority in your life. And that word has been confirmed many times here, and I'm thankful for the work that God has already done. You can be seated if you want. I'm no one special, but I believe God has spoken to me about what he's going to do tonight. In the age we're living in, there are so many voices and so much noise that is clouding our minds. The devil is walking about as a roaring lion. He likes to be loud. He tries to be the loudest voice that we hear. And in our society, that seems to be the reality. Our generation is listening to the voice of the enemy. The music is playing and they're bowing down to their idols. They're being deceived by the lies and the false promises of Satan. And for many of you here tonight, that may be your reality. Before you came to Camp Judah, the devil has been talking in your ear. He's been whispering thoughts into your mind. He's been talking condemnation into your spirit. Roaring to the point where you're so intimidated to do something for the Lord. I know what it's like to start to believe the lies of the enemy. To be so gripped by his words that you can't tell truth from lies anymore. But I've come tonight with a word from the Lord. The voice of the enemy, it may be loud in your ears tonight, but in the book of Psalms, the Bible says, our God shall come and shall not keep silence. God is in this place. And the word that he is going to give you is he will silence the voice of the enemy in your life. Amen. I think of the story of the man possessed with a legion of devils. That's, a thousand, that's thousands of devils in one person. Can you imagine the voices that he heard in his head? Can you imagine the tormenting noise that clouded his life every moment of every day? But the good news is that even thousands of devils could not stop that man from running to the feet of Jesus. And even though those voices had plagued him for years, all it took was one sentence for Jesus Christ to set him free. So don't let anything stop you from coming to Jesus tonight. If you haven't had your breakthrough, this is your moment. This is your, this is your time. If a thousand devils couldn't stop one man, nothing can stop you. I'm convinced this week that we've had more than just good church. We've had more than just good music, and it's been amazing. And the worship has been incredible because of the, of the spirit of this church. And we've had more than just crying and shouting and dancing in the altar. I believe the Lord has descended from heaven tonight with a shout. He stood up to come see about this group of young people at Camp Judah. And he has silenced the voice of the enemy in your life. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. 
God has spoken this week. His word has resounded in this camp. And there is nothing greater than the word from God. We believe that there's power in the name of Jesus, right? Isn't this an apostolic church? Jesus name church. I believe there's power in his name. But Psalm 138 too says, For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. I believe there's power in the name of Jesus. And we can speak in that name and we can claim healing and deliverance and freedom in that name. But when God speaks, when his voice resounds, all other voices have to be silent. When God speaks, things begin to change because something happens when Jesus Christ speaks a word in your life. Young people, let the word of God be truth in your life and every man be a liar. When Satan comes to you to remind you of your sin, point him to an altar where you repented and Jesus Christ forgave you. When he throws your past mistakes in your face and your failures, point him to the water where you went down in the name of Jesus and the blood of Christ washed you clean. When he tells you that you haven't been set free, that you're still a slave to sin or that you're still in chains, tell him there is now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of you. And greater is he that lives in you than he that is in the world. The voice of the enemy has no authority in your life. He has no right to speak to you because the anointing destroys the yoke. I know God has done a great work in your life this week. And he's going to do more tonight, I believe, it, and tomorrow. But I know what it's like to leave a Camp Judah experience. And in a week or so, the enemy is back on your shoulder, back at his lies, back at his games, trying to be the voice that is loudest and roaring in your life. So this is what I want you to do. Who has headphones? Anybody have headphones? Do you all know what these things are? They actually have good use, more than just getting tangled in your pocket. Be honest. How many of you have ever put these in your ears so people wouldn't talk to you Or that you could ignore somebody, right? I've been there, done that. (laughs) Be honest. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want to leave you with. You're leaving Camp Judah with a new song. Amen? So I want you to get out your spiritual headphones and let that be the song that you listen to. Let the voice of the Lord be be what's in your ears so that it drowns out the voice of the enemy. Let it be so loud in your ear that when the enemy comes and tries to whisper things in your ear, you can't even hear him because you're listening to the voice of God. Drown it out with your praise. Drown it out with your song. Let the voice of the Lord drown out the voice of the enemy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We heard Friday or uh, Tuesday night in prayer meeting. Brother Jonathan Chris got up, and he got to talking about condemnation. He got talking about how the devil want to tell you about things in your past, but God has already forgot those things. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Forgetting those things which are behind me, I press forth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're asking, I need some young men tonight to help me with the offering. Use Brother Chris. Let's use Brother Trey. Uh, Brother... You can come on up here, Dominion. And uh, we need one more. Let's use Brother Will LaRue. How many are thankful tonight that God didn't leave you where he found you? He didn't leave you. Uh, I know myself, I can look back at where I was. I grew up on a church pew. I grew up on a church pew, and I'm, I did things on a church pew that I regret, and I, I've actually, I, I'm surprised and utterly thankful for God's mercy. But he didn't leave me there. He saw what I was going to be. He sees young people. 
Sometimes we look at ourselves and we begin to see things in ourselves that we don't like and we think, I don't know if God can use this. I don't know if God can take what I have and he can use it. But he sees worth in you. He sees value in you for his kingdom. I wonder if we could lift our hands across this room and begin to love him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole And I could tell everyone I know You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my You thought I was worth So you cleaned me up inside that I was to die for. So you sacrificed. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone I know. Oh, oh. You thought I was worth saving. So you came. Changed my life. Go oh, and you clean me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone. So you cleaned me up inside. Oh, you thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone I know. You thought, yeah, you thought I was worth saving. Oh, so, so you came and saved me. And you can leave me up inside. Oh, no. 
some young people in here that can't give an expression of thanks tonight for freedom because God just saw what you were gonna be not what you were and he picked you up and he took you to where you are but he's not finished with you yet Hallelujah. when you become free and you become whole it is our job to tell everyone we know it is our job to begin to reach to be an extension of God. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the God that changed. Oh, and I will praise you. I'll worship you. I'll give you glory. I'll give you praise. I'll worship you. I am free 
So you came and changed so me. So you came and changed my life. You, you thought, thought I was worth keeping. Worth you was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You, you thought, thought I was to die, die for. So you sacrificed your life. So, so I, I could be, be free. Free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone I know. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. Thank you, God, for changing me. Thank you, Lord, for cleaning me up inside. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell There's no place, no place I'd rather be than right than here, here in, in your love. love. Here in your love, no place I'd rather be. There's no place, no place I'd rather be. There's no other place, no place I'd I would rather, rather be than here in your love. No place can There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Cause I want more of you. That I can't contain, that I can't control. 
the way you feel about it tonight. What if we couldn't sing that from the bottom of our heart? God, there's no place that I would rather be than right in the middle of your love. No place i Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's love him one more time as we wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you. Jesus, we love you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to bring Pastor Van Lue to this pulpit. 
Hallelujah. Great man of God. He's our pastor here at Abundant Life. Hallelujah. We're thankful. Thankful for our pastor. To greet him to this pulpit tonight with an apostolic amen. Hallelujah. An apostolic amen. Hallelujah. I'm just going to say this. I feel in the Holy Ghost. I don't want to mess anything up. There's so much in this world today to try to tear down the self-worth of young people. That by the time they get to the throne, they don't even feel like they're worthy. And when it gets to the church, we have people in the church that tries to make us feel unworthy. Make mistakes. Jesus might forget it, but our friends remember. And then we get this mindset where we don't understand why we would be worth saving. But there is a need right here in the Holy Ghost to give you back spiritual self-worth. There's an anointing right now settling in this atmosphere. I don't care who's here, who's not here. Without any political games, young people, if you're a camper, I want you to stand on your feet. I don't know if we ain't just going to turn this service to Pastor uh, Chris, but I want you to stand on your feet right now. I want all the ministry, if you will, to just come out here to the front of this platform. You can stay on the floor. You can stand up here. And we're going to have these preachers hold their hands up over this group of campers. And when they begin to pray over you, there's going to be an anointing dispatched. I know this might be a little unorthodox, but there's going to be an anointing dispatched. And God is going to begin to let you see the power in your life. God's going to embolden and empower you with a powerful confidence in the Holy Ghost. Come on, every preacher that's here. Matter of fact, young people, why don't you just step up here if you feel like you need something from God right now. Come on, in the name of Jesus, as they begin to hold their hands up over you. I know everybody can't be touched, but we have enough preachers here to pray over you right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, young people. God. Yeshopateyeramoshihima. Let there be an ebb and flow of the Holy Ghost. Come on, I need some preachers that will operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Let yourself be made at home right now. Spiritual words needs to be spoken. This week, God has pulled the razor out of young people's hands. Let the 
I am more than a failure. I'm a satire. Come on, I'm more than my past. I'm more than the mistakes. Come on, come on. Come on, young. There's young people out here that need a touch from God. Come on, let the gifts of the Spirit be in operation right now. Why don't you walk around and put your hands on some of these people, preachers? Make yourself at home. This pulpit's open. I rebuke every spirit of condemnation. Yes, <laughs> Come on, we can dance, but can we move in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost? Deliverance. We need deliverance. God, deliver us. Spiritually, come on, flow in the Holy Ghost, flow in the Holy Ghost, flow in the Holy Ghost. Jesus. Come on, adults, why don't you lift your hands and stretch them to the front of this church? There's an outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the front right now. Hallelujah. There are literally, literally thousands of angels all around here. Thousands of angels around here. They're battle worn, they're fighting for you. I believe they're going to walk right through this crowd here tonight. All these young people, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bronde crote siria madiandro tele mahala. Thousands of angels. Brenda, they're camping here. Hallelujah, they're camping here. Hall around about us here tonight. Haramatela san reme koriama tele san riama. Makoram retela san rama koriama ti haud remeleote. They're going to fortify you. They're going to fortify you. Hallelujah. Like you've never been fortified before. They're going to fortify you, young people. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, my Lord. Hallelujah. God Almighty. Hallelujah. Stand up, Lord. Stand up. Hallelujah. Fight for these young people. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Anoint their hands. Anoint their feet. Anoint their eyes. Anoint their mouths. Let them be loosed to turn this generation upside down. Hallelujah. 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 Let them turn the battle tonight. Let them turn the battle tonight. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
My Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Let's give it a shout. Let's all give it a shout. Hallelujah. Let's shout the victory. Hallelujah. Let's let the enemy hear us. We have the shout. Hallelujah. Because there's victory in the camp. There's victory tonight in the camp. We're victorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
We're past the point of entertainment right now. There's no music. There's no songs. You might as well participate in the Holy Ghost. There's an atmosphere of demonstration of the Lord Jesus Christ in this room. Come on, there's not going to be entertainment tonight.
Hallelujah. Can we worship the Lord all together right now from wherever you're at? We're getting ready to transition. I feel like the preacher needs to say something tonight. Worship the Lord from wherever you're at right now. Jesus, we praise you. We glorify you. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a glorious presence of your spirit. What a demonstration of your throne. We glorify you, O oh God. We magnify you, O oh God. We exalt you, O oh God. Praise you for it. We thank you for it. We glorify you for it. In Jesus' name, we love you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Will you clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise? Come on, we can do better than that. Just Camp Judo alone can get louder than that. Clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Multiple people have been refilled with the Holy Ghost. Disconnected people have prayed back through. We've had three people get the Holy Ghost this week. Amen. There's been apostolic authority and demonstration all over this house. I'm not going to waste time introducing somebody that need no, needs no introduction. Amen. I'm going to allow him to come up here right now. Amen. He can do whatever he feels. If he wants to preach, he can. If he wants to speak to us, he can. If he wants to tell us good night, he can. It's up to Brother Chris. I really feel like the Lord wants to speak to our church tonight. I said, I feel like he does. And so I want him to take his liberty. Amen. We've had quite a move of the Holy Ghost, and there is no need to say any more than that. Hallelujah. Brother Chris, come on right now, wherever you're at. Take your liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Would you do that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I realize that the Holy Ghost is having and has had its way. I'm not apologizing for what I'm getting ready to do. However, I do realize that I'm fixing to probably deal with some spirits. <clears throat> Even with all of this praying and praising and, and the power of God that's in here, <clears throat> there is still a spirit of carnality that is doing its best to work on some of your minds. And the minute that I say, open in your Bibles. Some of you in your spirit, some of you in your spirit is saying, we already had church. But I'm going to tell you, the Holy Ghost has given me something for you tonight. And those of you that want it, I'm fixing to give it everything I got for the next few minutes. Hallelujah. <clears throat> those of you that want it. So I might need some extra help tonight. How about it? If you have your Bibles, Genesis chapter 19. Wow, what great preaching we've already heard. We have heard tremendous preaching, tremendous singing. Your prayers are being heard. Your prayers are, it's amazing what's going on. You've not danced me down one night. You've not shouted me down one night. You've prayed us all the way through the, this camp and it's been an absolutely phenomenal camp here. Aren't you glad for Camp Judah? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you have your Bibles, Genesis 19, 15, and when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, 
lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Look not behind thee. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Amen. Genesis 19 and verse 24 said, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And the overthrow and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Luke 17, 32 simply says, remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. Lord, I ask you to help me do a good job. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. I want to preach to you from this thought, I, and this is how we talk in Louisiana, I ain't looking back. <clears throat> I ain't looking back. Can I just say it the way I feel it tonight? Can I preach it the way I feel it tonight? Can I preach it the way I feel like some of you young folks are feeling tonight? I need some help for just a little while from some folks that refuse to turn around, that refuse to look back, that refuse to go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm starting to... How about this side over here? You just want to keep on going? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> History is replete with men that set their head to do something and said, I am going to finish. They decided and they made up in their mind. We are going even if we've got to go by ourselves. If you look into the New Testament, you'll find a God that we serve who robed himself in flesh. Amen. And he went to a cross for us. But there on the cross, he, he just said a couple of words toward the end. And it was simply, it is finished. It's such a powerful statement to, for a man to make. It is finished. I don't have anything else to do. There's nothing more for me to do here. I have finished. When you look at Paul, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. He even said, I, even, I have finished finished my course. I feel like that I'm looking at some young folks in here tonight that you are not just a starter, but you are a finisher. I feel like there's some young folks here that's got a hold of something in this youth camp and you're saying, come what may, fight what I gotta fight. I will not just be a youth camp apostolic but I will finish this thing. I will finish this thing. Come on, somebody give him praise right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Amen. You may be seated in order to do so. In order to finish, you have to be able to look forward. Somebody say, look forward. Jesus said for the joy that was set before him. Hallelujah. The scripture said for the joy that was set before him. 
He endured the cross. You cannot endure the cross if you have no vision and if you have no goals. I want to ask you something. What do you want your youth camp or your youth, amen, your youth in your church, to your youth group to be this time next year? I want to ask you what it's, it's all right to shout about what's going on here at Judah, but I wonder if God could give you a vision today. I wonder if God could give you a goal today that you would say, you know what? I've got something that I'm looking forward to. I'm going to have greater revival. I'm going to have a greater move of God than I've ever had. This is going to be my year. This is going to be my day. This is going to be my time. I'm going to be used greater. I'm going to sing more powerful. I'm going to pray more. I've got a goal. Hallelujah. And if you've got a goal and you're excited about that goal, then it ought to give you joy. Ah, hallelujah. We sing that old song, I get joy when I think about uh, what is done for me. I get joy when I think about uh, what is done for me. You can shout about when you think about what is done for you. Uh, but I wonder if there's somebody that God could give a vision uh, about what he's getting ready to do for you. Uh, about God giving you a revival that's going to be unprecedented. Uh, that hell can't stop. Uh, that hell can't shut up. I wonder if there's somebody that can get some joy when you think about what it's going to do for you in this next year. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Oh, I feel good in the Holy Ghost tonight. Woo! Amen. David began to pray. He said, God, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Then he said this, restore unto me ye katalabahaya. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. I'm telling you what the Holy Ghost is doing in this youth camp is he's restoring your joy again. Your joy in serving God again. Your joy in living for God again. He said, oh God, you've got to restore unto me the joy of my salvation. If I can get my joy back, I'm going to be all right. If I can get my joy back, everything's going to be okay. If I can get my joy back, there is no devil in hell, under hell, around hell that's going to be able to stop me. Oh God, restore unto me. I feel a restoration of joy coming. I feel a restoration of joy coming. It's coming right now. It's coming in this house from the front to the back restoration of joy it's getting ready to happen you prayed you fasted but here comes the impartation of joy I got my joy back I got my joy back I got my joy back yeah Somebody shout glory! Hallelujah. He said, if I can get it back, it's going to be okay. You'll be seated just for a minute. Let me tell you something. This old boy getting too old for you, Cam, just preaching another thing. But I'm going to tell you, David had messed up. He had messed up real bad. Let me tell you why he messed up. He messed up because he went back home. (laughs) 
and he wanted to do this number. While kings were at battle, you are not just anybody. You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. You're a holy nation. God has anointed you for warfare. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Hey, the homosexual agenda is coming out of the closet, but the church is not going back in. We're not hiding. We're not afraid. We're going to war. We're going to war. I won't kick my feet up. I won't slack up. I didn't get in this to get out. I didn't stand up to sit down. I didn't speed up to slow down. I'm in it to win it. I'm in it to win it. Is there anybody that want to go forward? Oh, is there anybody that wants to go forward? Wednesday night again. Bible study again. He's preaching that again. They're singing that again. It used to move me. I used to get all excited about that. So I'm telling you, have you heard that song? I got a river of living water. Y'all heard that song? Well, they're about to wear me out on that song. You should have been new to the preacher. Church alone, blah, 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 blah. If you don't believe I've been with D, they just doing that to get me crunk in here. Because they just want to have a little good serving that don't like doing it. I just want to go home. I'm sick of I come with leaving on my mind. Man, come on. McDonald's is calling me. I'm ready to leave. I wish he'd just shut up. I wish he'd just quit. I'm sorry if they sing that song one more time. I'm just going to, I'm just going to run out of here. Attitudes. Lazy spirits that don't want to fight. That don't want to go to war. But I feel in the Holy Ghost there are some young folks that are saying I'm ready to go to war. I'm ready to fight again. I'm ready to be what I need to be. I ain't looking back. Anybody ever got the Holy Ghost in this camp? Look at all these folks that's got the Holy Ghost in this camp. Isn't that amazing? Who's got the Holy Ghost in this church? You, you received the Holy Ghost in this church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at all these folks who got the Holy Ghost right here. Hey, Brother Jonathan Coffey, run up here right quick. Hallelujah. I want you to tell me where you got the Holy Ghost in this church. Did you get the Holy Ghost right there? Let me tell you something. You remember the first time they sung that song? You should have been there when I preached. Huh? Anybody remember that? It was good then, wasn't it? It was good then. I wish we could somehow make that feeling come back the way it was when it first began. Let me, I want to tell you something, Brother Jonathan Colfin, just use you for example. You got the Holy Ghost right there. Don't you ever forget it if you start getting bored with this thing and if you start getting to where you want to lay out of church and not be faithful to the house of God, you come right back to where you started and you ask God, renew that love in me again. I don't want to turn around. I don't want to walk away. I don't want to leave this place. I've got to have you more. I've got to have you more than I've got to have anything. Uh, there's a lot of folks that's turning around, but it ain't you, baby. It ain't you, honey. You're just going to keep on going, forgetting those things which are behind me. I'm 
press toward the mark of the high calling. I, I refuse to quit. I refuse to throw in the towel. I refuse to back up. I'm going forward. I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark. I'm fighting a day for this thing. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. I won't quit. I won't quit. I won't quit. I won't stop. I won't back up. I won't walk away. I know the Holy Ghost. I got a feeling that's where she got the Holy Ghost at right there. I just got this feeling. There's some folks that's wanting to renew your first love. I said, you're wanting to renew your first love. Let me, ha- let me tell you how to do that. First, make up in your mind you ain't going anywhere. If you'll make up in your mind that quitting's not an option, you won't entertain it. If you'll make up in your mind that I refuse to give up, you won't entertain it. There are no back doors. There are no other ways. I'm going on with Jesus. I'm going on with Jesus. Oh! I got to hurry and quit here. Ooh. We got our new churches. Buddy, you getting ready to go in a fine church. I'm so excited about that. Ooh, it's going to be an amazing deal. What y'all think because I sat down, you, you got to? I'm just kidding. It's all, right. it's all right. You do what you feel in the Holy Ghost. I mean, you know, we got our fine palaces. We have arrived. We made it. We got better singing than we've ever had. We got better choirs than we've ever had. I missed the choir tonight and last night. We got better choirs. It ain't because they couldn't sing. Why they didn't sing? Because these kids can sing. If you don't believe that, should have been here last night at the talent show. They can just do it. Amen. We got better choirs. We got better equipment. Amen. If one mic don't work, we'll, 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 get, a, we'll get another mic that does. Amen. Come on. I mean, we got thermostats. We got comfort. It seems like every day of our life we're trying to find the easiest way to do don't work harder, work smarter. Come on. I know how to delegate authority, so I'm not going to pray today. Come on, somebody. I'll put my dog on a fast. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to fast. Let my dog fast for me. I mean, it is a sacrifice. It's just not me sacrificing. Y'all, y'all go on to the battlefield. I'm going to chill at the palace today. But the problem is, is you start getting a little bored at the palace. And you start meandering around and looking here. And you want to find this book to read. Oh, I remember this book. Oh, I remember this. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Woo. Hello. I know I shouldn't have looked there, but one more time, ain't gonna hurt. Oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be entertaining that idea. He's looking out across the way at somebody bathing. He'd have never had that chance if he'd have been on the battlefield. Yeah. He'd have, he'd have never had the opportunity to fail if he'd have been busy where he's supposed to be busy at. We got a lot of folks busy, but they're not busy where they're supposed to be busy at. We need some young folks that's more busy about the king's business uh, than they are about their brother's business uh, and about the latest whatever catchphrase. Uh, we need some folks that's busy about warfare and fighting and going on with Jesus. I'm not talking about fighting one another. I'm talking about fighting the enemy that's trying to destroy the revival in your community and church. If, can I have about two hour? I'm just kidding. Hey man, if, just, just kidding. If you're not where you're supposed to be, 
other stuff gets your attention that don't need to have your attention. And here's what happened. Watch this. Be seated. Let me tell you what sin does. Sin likes to be covered up and hid. I've noticed people say, well, I just can't talk to my mama and I just can't talk to my daddy. And most time it's because they're hiding something. I just can't talk to my pastor. It's because you're hiding something. When sin happens, let's cover it. Let's hide out. Let's not mess with it. Let's try to fix it another way. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we can just fix it another way, it'll be maybe nobody will know. Watch what I do. See, what happened is, is he entertained an idea and then he engulfed himself in that entertainment so much that it became a reality. And before you know it, he's done had a fling with something he shouldn't have had a fling with. And sin is getting ready to be birthed. It's been conceived. Are y'all still with me here? Oh, hallelujah. And so he says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You know what we're talking about here, don't you? He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to send out to that boy that's out there fighting where I should have been fighting. And I'm going to ask him to go, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. He said, I'm going to bring him here, and I'm going to pamper him, and I'm going to baby him. And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to send him home. And I'm going to let him cover up what I messed up. But that old boy came back from the battlefield because the king called him. And when the king called him in and told him what he was going to do, he walked outside, but he didn't go any further than the steps. He said, I am not going home. Not while my brothers are fighting on a battlefield. Not while my brothers are out there laboring for my freedom. I refuse to go home. I guess what I'm trying to preach is, is you can't quit until the battle's over. You can't go home and turn in until the battle's over. We got some obligations here. If I die, let me die doing what I'm supposed to do. I don't want to die a compromiser. I don't want to die a quitter. I don't want to die as somebody that's looking for a comfort zone. I don't want to die at ease in Zion. I don't want my flight to be in winter. I want to be on fire for God. I want to be doing something great for God. I want to be on the battlefield. And so after all of that, David said, God, restore unto me the joy. If I can get my joy back, that's what I lost, God. God, I, I think that's the problem. He said, if you, if you will give me my joy back, all them folks that I see losing it, he said, I'll teach transgressors that way. And sinners, oh, hallelujah. There's just something about somebody that's been through a trial that's caused you to lose your joy. That when you come out on the other side with a restoration of it, it causes you to have a discerning spirit of others that are losing their joy. And that's when you need to go give your testimony to them and say, don't you dare lose your joy. Don't you dare lose your fire. Don't you dare lose your prayer life. If you can't pray by yourself, come get me. I'll pray with you. One can put a thousand a flight, but two can put ten thousand a flight. I know you're weak right now. I know you're tired. Come here, son. I know you're weak right now. I know you're tired right now. I know you're having a hard time right now. But I want you to know you're not by yourself. You might not have the strength on your own, but I got something for you. You just hang on. But whatever you do, don't you look back. Whatever you do, don't you turn around. You ought to reach out to some of your friends that have backslidden and walked away from God in this next year and say, I know, son, you've been through a lot, but we've got to get back to business for the king. We cannot turn around. It's too late in the game.
I got to quit. As the music comes, I got bunches more to preach. But I, I feel like you're getting the point. I ain't looking back. I want you elders to know. There's some that said it to you. I know that. And I know you don't even really have to believe me because you've seen folks that you had more confidence in than me. I want you to know, Brother Donegan, I want you to know I got my mind made up. You ain't got to worry about me come next year throwing away everything that I've ever been taught. I'm here. I've just made it. I'm here. This, I've, I made this my home. I want you to know I'm just going to stay with it. I ain't turning back. I'm just not going to turn back. I've seen too many that have. I've seen way too many that have. But I can't do it. It's not in me to do it. You know why it's not in me to do it? Hallelujah. Jordan Blake, Christ. I don't know where you are, buddy. Judah Blake, Christ. I don't know where you are, buddy. Stand up. Georgie, I sure love you, boy. But don't you ever look to me for compromise. Don't you ever look to me for giving up. Because that's one thing we will not do. Yes. Judah Blade, don't you ever look to your mom and daddy to give up and give in and compromise the faith. Because that's just one thing that we ain't going to do. And I pray to God that when you get a family, son, that you look at your little boy, your little girl, and you say, this is the way. This is where we're walking at. We will see and ask for the old paths. And we will walk therein. And that is where we will find rest for our souls. I refuse to quit. I refuse to quit. Yeah! Hallelujah! 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 I believe the Bible said, Be not weary in well doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not, if you just won't look back, if you just won't turn around. You're going to reap. There is a harvest of revival that God is wanting to give you. We can't look back. We can't look back. Joan of Arc was only 17. Everybody say 17. When she led the armies of France against the English. One afternoon as the armies of France were approaching the city, they saw in the distance tens of thousands of soldiers manning the barricades at every elevation. Joan of Arc told her leaders, immediately, now, now, we must take them now. The leaders were horrified at her boldness and passion for winning this battle against seasoned warriors. After all, she was a peasant girl leading a rabble of men from France. She said, I intend to strike at the heart of the barricade. If you go in, they told her, not one man will follow you. Simply, she replied, I won't be looking back. She just said, I, I, can't, I can't help it. So I'm going into the enemy's camp. And I'm fixing to take back some stuff that the devil stole from me. Well, it's Wednesday night and I, I don't think that anybody's going to follow you. I'm not looking back. I can't help it. If God be for me, who can be against me? I'm going in if I got to go by myself. I know what I got to do. And I want you to know there are some young folks in here. You know what you got to do. Don't you look back for your neighbor to follow you. Just tell them what I'm doing for God. And if they don't follow you, don't let it dictate to you what you're going to do. You just keep on going. You just keep on living for God. You just keep on going for God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling moving right.
right now. I feel a tenacity in some of you young folks that say, I am going through. I'm going through. I don't care what the rest of the world is going to do. I made up my mind. I ain't going to turn around. I'm walking with Jesus and I got to go through. There are some of you that are singing with me. You better look out, Satan. Look out. You better look out, Satan. Look out. I feel like there's some folks in here that are telling the devil right now there is not one thing that can stop me from my glory, from seeing my vision, from having revival. I refuse to look back. I refuse to look back. I refuse to look back. I'm burning every bridge. I'm burning every exit. I'm barricading anything that I could go back to. I'm going through. I'm going through. Look at your neighbor right now and say, I'm going through. Will you go with me? Will you go with me? Will you go with me? I wonder if there's anybody that reach over and grab on this last night of Camp Judah. I wonder if you'd reach over and grab a neighbor right now and say, help me praise my way through. Help me get through this thing. I know it's about time to eat, but I gotta get through. I know it's about time for the talent show, but right now, I've got to get through, I've got to get through, if you don't want to, you're not going to stop me, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, yeah! Oh, 
And while they play, I want you to hear me. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I want every young person to hear me. Paul was talking to him. He said, look, I know I haven't already attained. I know I'm not perfect. There's not a young person in here. There's not an adult in here. There's not anybody in here that's perfect. He said, I know I haven't made it yet. I'm not perfect yet. But he said, there is one thing I do. I know y'all are cliched, old-fashioned, apostolic Pentecostals. You already know what I'm going to say. There is one thing I do. I forget. First thing we got to do is stop looking back. Forget what's behind us. What's behind us doesn't matter. What we've done is no longer even valid. I said what we've done is no longer even valid. Who cares what the devil's been saying? Who cares what is in our past? It doesn't even matter. Number two, I don't look around me either. I don't get influenced by what's beside me either. Look, I don't know what kind of atmosphere you're going back to. I don't know if you're going into a church and maybe the pastor there isn't even came to Judah one time. Maybe you don't even know what you're facing when you get back to your church. Maybe you're the only young person that came to Judah from your church. But no matter who you are or what you're going back to, you do not need to be influenced by what's around you any more than what's behind you. So if there's somebody in Wednesday night Bible study or Sunday morning Sunday school that comes in with a dead, dried up mentality, you need to get out in the aisle and start saying hallelujah anyhow. Praise Jesus. Glorify you, O oh God. If the prayer room's empty and your pastor's the only one praying, you need to go in there and get down right beside him and don't just keep your voice silent, but lift your voice and let it be heard. You see, it doesn't matter what's behind you. It doesn't matter what's around you. It only matters what's in front of you. And like Brother Chris said, he said, I'm going before you. If God is for us, who can be against us? Forgetting those things which are behind me, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm not worried about my past. I'm not even worried about my present. I got my eyes fixed up on a mark, on a vision, on a calling, on an anointing that I got to do. Anybody believe tonight that we are not going back? We're not going to be what we used to be. We're going to be better than we've ever been. I wonder, I wonder right now if you can link up with somebody that's not from your church. Come on, young person in camp or link up with somebody that's not from your church. Put at least one hand on somebody that's not from your church. Listen to me. You have no idea what they're going through. You have no idea what they're going through. They might be really battling at home. I prayed for a young person this week. They said, Pastor, I feel delivered of all that cutting spirit. If you would have told some of you that they had a cutting spirit, you would have called me a liar. They might not look like it. They might look like they have it all together, but the spirit of suicide is trying to attack their mind. And this is what I want you to understand right now. Jesus loves the person that's standing beside you enough that he wants you to pray the prayer of authority. Hold on just a second. He wants you to get bold. I feel like the Holy Ghost has told me that he's going to dispatch young people out of this camp with a new boldness. With no condemnation. With no shame. But just knowing that it's not about me and it's all about him. I can't do anything but he can do everything. I know we got 
one more service. Doug Smith's preaching in the morning and he's gonna blow this place up. But you hear me tonight, who you got your hand on, they might be going back to a mom and dad that's on drugs and they have to wake them up to get them out of their own vomit so they don't puke, amen, and die drowning in their own vomit. You hear this preacher, you have no idea who you have your hand on. Why don't you pray that God will use them in a boldness like they've never been used and pray the prayer of authority and say, God, let their church, let their youth group have revival. Don't let them look back. Let them look forward. Don't let them be ashamed. Get their mind on you. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Pray like their life depends on it.
spirit lives in me and that's the reason I'm sold out. That's the reason I'm sold out. Yeah. Oh, my heart is fixed, my, my mind's made up. No room, no vacancy, I'm Hallelujah. 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 My father in law is here tonight. I went down to his church one time. I thank God that he's here. Amen. He's up here visiting. Being a part of this camp, we appreciate him being here. He was at his church one time, and he always has a banner over his 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 top of his wall that gives his church's vision for the year. The word that he gives the church is "State of the Union," I guess type of dress. And uh, one time I walked in and said, "Resolute." And I'd heard of resolutions, and his said, "Resolute." And he began to explain the word resolute to me. And I feel like we have to leave here with a resolute kind of attitude in this house tonight. We have to leave here with a newfound resolve, if you will. A mentality change. I don't know about you, but I'm going to get up from the altar of Judah different than when I got down at the altar of Judah. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to talk to every young person very seriously. I'm not going to kill the spirit, but I was talking to Macy. She's here tonight, and uh, she's a Camp Judah veteran, sent back there by Brandon. I said, anything changed? She said, well, she said, there's a whole lot of young people that's changed. Everybody's different. They're, I'm older now, and all these young people are new. She said, besides that, most of the young people are either married or they're not in church. That's from my generation. And I want to explain something to you. Judah will not save you. It might power pack you. It might call. You might get a call here. You might feel the anointing. You might get energized to go back to your church. But between July and July, it's not going to keep you saved. One service, two services, four services that you come to at Judah is not going to keep you saved. You got to have a mindset of what this preacher preached tonight. You got to have a mindset I will not go back. I was praying for some saints here the other day, young people, and the Lord showed me a dog with vomit all over its mouth. And he just said one word the dog will always return to the vomit. But I'm going to tell you something right now. We can't go back to that mess. We cannot go back to that mess that Satan has tried to plague us with. Amen. It doesn't matter what your best friend does. It doesn't matter even what your brother does. It doesn't matter what your sister does. It doesn't even matter what your mom and dad does. All the excuses need to be thrown in the trash. And we need to have a mindset that's made up saying, God, I will not. That's weak. I will not. Go back. I will not. Go back. What a massive move of the Holy Ghost tonight. Thank you, Brother Chris, for preaching to us. Great message. Amen. Amen. Four specific things. First of all, uh, Brother Doug Smith, wave your hand, Brother Smith, will be preaching in the morning at 11 o'clock. Amen. I just wish he could get a little smoother. Amen. With his presentation. Praise the Lord. But he will come. The rough edges will come in here tomorrow morning. And he will preach to us in the morning. If you're not doing anything, it is Saturday. If you have the day off, we invite you back. Amen. It will be the conclusion of Camp Judah. We invite you back for Saturday at 11 o'clock. 
Judah. Brother Smith is going to bring a word divinely anointed of God for this camp. I believe it. I believe that he has the word to dispatch us. I believe it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I believe that with all my heart. Amen. Second of all, amen. If you're not going anywhere to eat tonight, you'd like to come down and eat with us. The uh, meal is $3 a person. It's down in the FLC. We'd love to have you come down and be a part of that. The next thing is Camp Judas Got Talent final round will be in this building. And uh, we will push it back just a little bit probably because it's already 948. But we'll, we're going to have it here in this building. That being said, we, uh, we are going to have Camp Judas Got Talent. And then we're going to present your young people with trophies. Um, we might do that at the beginning, but we're definitely going to present it at that moment. And uh, it will be Camp King and Queen, Camp Clown, Outstanding Christian Character. All of that stuff will be presented that after service tonight. And then we'll be trying to get these kids in bed so they don't sleep on Brother Smith in the morning. Amen. How blessed is the young person that can come to Camp Judah and get enough sleep. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Last thing. Thank you. Hey, that, that was a toad right there. That wasn't even a frog, man. That was a toad. And, and, and last but certainly not least, all the preachers, the ministry, I'm asking you please to go to the front of the line and get your food and join me at the table and uh, join our ministry at the table. Make connections. And I know there's some preachers who haven't got to talk a lot. Sit down beside somebody you don't know and just make a connection. This is what Cam's all about. Young people finding girlfriends and boyfriends. That's what Cam's all about. Amen. Hold on just a second. I, I want to say something real quick uh, before you get scattered. Jonathan, run up here real quick. Where's Jonathan? Coffee. Come here. And Reese, And bring your son. Bring your son. And, and Morgan and Kayla. Come up here real quick. Amen. These, these guys are on the Camp Judah committee. And uh, come on. Quick means uh, like, yeah. Thank you for the obedience, son. Praise the Lord. Amen. This guy right here, uh, when we started Judah, he wasn't old enough to come. And uh, how old were you when we started Judah? 2002. I was 11. I was 11. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. He was 10, and he wasn't able to come, and, uh, and so uh, anyway, that's, that's his story about Judah. Three years ago, he met his wife at Judah. She wasn't his wife then, praise the Lord. She wasn't somebody else's either. Amen. She was, amen. That's right, Brother Kanata. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So uh, they met three years ago at Judah. They fell in love, and now three years later, and he directs our youth choir here at this church. Is that cool? And then, and then uh, the first Camp Judah ever came, Reese came. And, uh, and, and her mom, dad, and all these people showed up from Edinburgh. And uh, Jonathan was how old? 2002. He was 14 years old. And, uh, and, and, and they met at Camp Judah. And uh, I was sitting at old Charlie's one night. And I said, brother, have thou considered Reese Bailey? He said, are you from Judah? Are you kidding, Pastor? I said, no, I'm not kidding. I think you guys would make a great match. I feel the Holy Ghost is wanting you guys to get together. <laughs> I didn't say the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I said, I feel Jeremy Van Lewis wanting you to get together. And uh, he said, well, I'm, I don't know. I, and he started, he started dating her. And uh, now years later, 2002 to 2015, 13 years later, Amen. Not only are they married, but they have this precious little boy named Noah. Yeah. <clears throat> and they have baby number two on the way. Yeah. So the moral of all that is this. I know I took a little time. The moral of all that is this. Be careful who you date at Judah. 
I know you think it's not really that big of a deal and you'll break up with them when you get back home, but you could end up with this person. There's a love bug might bite you or something. And uh, you never know, so be careful. Right, Brother Shane Coffey? Amen. Praise the Lord. He has three daughters and a son at Judah. I know he wants everybody to be careful who they date at Judah. Amen. We're going to have a good time. Now, now this guy right here, this is my cousin. He came to Judah for the first time this year. His name's Ryder. He don't care if there's even a girl at Judah this year. He don't care. He doesn't look for a girl right now. He's looking for the Lord, right? He wants God. Amen. He's God. Amen. So young people, amen, this is going to be a good night. You got about, uh, when are we going to start with Adams? Joe, Judah's good. Yeah. We're going to push for 1130. You got about an hour and a half. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Tell Brother Chris how much you appreciated his preaching. You're dismissed. God bless you. One more thing.